Good morning, everybody, and this is your Dow Jones day trade setup for today. So, yeah, we had a really weird day yesterday, but again, um, as I said in the S&P video, there, there's so much chaos happening. You know, we've got politicians playing delay tactics. Uh, well, I don't even want to call them politicians because it's just power hungry. Um, evil individuals as far as I'm concerned um, they have no interest at heart except their own and um, they're causing havoc at the moment uh, in a number of areas right now but uh, specifically around the um, the stimulus bill so they you know there's so much so many um, personal agendas that have been woven into this bill and little pet projects and you know people just trying to jockey for positions to get their little um, fingers in the pie and uh, you know I watch the chaos and I just think oh, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm grateful that I live in Africa where you know, the corruption is so blatant that uh, you just laugh about it but anyway so not a political show is it it's uh, the Dow Jones that we on anyway the the chaos at the moment is damn difficult to trade. It's uh, I'm not going to you know, deny it. it. It's not giving clean signals. We've been sideways. We broke the sideways range, the upside. Broke at the downside. Back in the range. Now we've broken the downside. You know the question is, is it a is it a broader range at the moment? Um, are we trying to to swing to turn? I don't think we're going to be turning. I don't think the Feds will allow that. Uh, they will definitely not allow that. I do think that a lot of the noise that is being put into the market right now is to try and, and get the market to, to correct, uh, sort of, you know, a nice healthy correction so that we've got a, a base to build off and start uh, climbing again. So that's kind of my view on this at the moment. But I also think that uh, there's so much um, algorithm trading at the moment. In other words, uh, computers are artificial intelligence that are trying to make decisions that they they're picking up on all the noise and are basically confused so algorithms are confused traders are confused everybody's confused which is what's creating this volatility so anyway let's just look at pure price action here because that will reflect in the chart so that was our first move down we moved back up onto 61.8 and that was our second move down boom okay so i line up with the level there's my inside bars, and that's where price got to. So you see, um, just a quick lesson here. Whenever there's a, a move, there's normally a second move. Um, more often than not, to the upside, the the, the downside moves in a, in a bull trend um, do play out, but they typically play out like this. They'll fall to the first bit of support. So that's kind of what's happened here. And you can see down onto support, up. You can take Fibonacci on that. You'll see that's a 61.8. Also, big area there. Look to the left. Uh, we hang around there for a couple of uh, eight-hour bars, basically a day or two, a day and a bit, and then we started falling. Don't didn't fall smoothly. So it fell with confusion. Now we are sort of on the 155 at the moment, so it's something you need to bear in mind. If we start moving through the time frames now, have a look at this. I mean, from the three-hour perspective. There is consolidation. So you would have been forgiven to thinking we are finding support here and moving to the upside. But another lesson learned here, whenever price is up and below the moving averages, and I keep saying it, it is a range, it's confusion, it, probability of it breaking either way is very strong. Um, in other words, you may as well just toss a coin because that's going to give you a better guesstimate of where it's to get in. We did get a break, we came back for a retest. The retest was really messy before selling off and then getting this massive pin bar going into the close. That's buyers. Okay, is it profit taking or is it buyers? My view is it buyers. I think there may be a little bit of short scalps down here, but this is buyers coming into the market for some reason. Look at the diversions at the moment. Low, higher low, break above this pin bar, what verifies that? So let's just put a, a block in here. And uh, and this is a little bit different. So the, the down is a bit different to the S&P 500 because this is, um, so the banks are pretty much the stronger element of this and there's fewer dependencies on tech. 
whereas the S&P 500 is depending on tech. And obviously there's a, a war, political war on tech stocks as well at the moment. So um, that is why there's, there's such a difference between the two. So at the moment, until the tech stocks sort themselves out, this is probably the, the area that you want to be looking at at the moment. Uh, well, the in instrument you want to be looking at, put it that way. So if we look at the one hour, now, again, some very unclear decisions, and you can see pin bar, pin bar. Whenever you see that, well, for me anyway, when I see that, that just indicates confusion, and I just switch the charts off and don't even bother trying to look at it again, because there is no ways you're going to guess which pin bar is going to be broken. It's an indication of a range, it's an indication of confusion. And uh, the only positive indication we had was the fact that we're below the, um, the 155, but we're above and below the other moving averages. So whenever you're above and below the 33 and the 66, it's confusion. It's pointless trying to, to take that trade. You can see here is pretty clear on that pin bar. A break below that pin bar is going to get us moving down, and it did get us moving down. This would have uh, just triggered stops, basically. But um, same thing here, diversions, massive amounts of diversions, big amount of buyers coming in here, bit of structure forming right now, but as I say, we need to break above this area here, and that is 31.50, 31.050, that's the area we need to watch um, for a base to form, and then you're looking for a continuation up. Would I be looking for shorts on this market now? No, definitely not. Overall trend is up, but lower trends are down, I agree. So you'll probably find a uh, move up into this area, rejection, but I have a feeling it's just going to start building a, a decent base. Uh, if we just moved out the 15 minutes, because that's currently what we should be trading, and you'll see what I mean yesterday. Sideways, no real direction at all. You know, there is a fairly decent uh, short entry, short-lived as well. Then we break, you can see the rejection off there. Uh, there was a, a potential entry that would have failed and triggered up the upside, down. Now we're above and below the moving averages. Not really something I want to be trading. What I would have been interested in was a retest of that area there. So 31,170 break below. I'm looking for a retest up here. Never happened. So that is at this stage the the only setup that I can see for another move. Uh, to the downside. We've got no farm payrolls today, so I think for me, we we'll shouldn't wait until that happens before we do anything. So that is the only real trade that I'd be looking at at the moment, um, is to see what happens up here at 31.170. On the 50 minute, yes, trend is down. Look at the oscillators are indicating we're coming up to a level for another move down. Um, this, this buying frenzy here at the close that's 400 points, that's a 1.3% move. Um, so the buyers moved the market 1.3%, okay, it, did, it fell quite a bit, it fell 2.8%, so uh, almost almost half the move was uh, moved down was recovered at the close. So read into it what you want. Uh, for me, you know, that's just looking like buyers are stepping in. I don't think that's just pure profit taking. Uh, that is buyers looking at value and starting to buy stocks. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens with non-farm payrolls because that's going to be the major driver at the moment. And um, I'm not looking to buy until we get a buy signal. And the buy signal is going to be a crossover of the moving averages on the 15 and a retest of those moving averages. That's the only thing that's going to get me buying so you can see we had a crossover and that kind of you know, we're going to all get was a retest it would have been a retest in a lower time frames but you can see the moving averages all up so a break above that would have been a reasonably good uh, opportunity and you can see how aggressive that was um, even this area here at the open you can see up and then down below it again and when we see that kind of price action we know something's going to happen the question is which direction Okay, there you can see a one bar break and retest of the moving averages. So that's kind of the setup that we're looking for at the moment. Um, especially with the moving averages being that wide apart, which is exactly what's transpiring here. 
But anyway, guys, this is uh, still confusion as far as I'm concerned. It's uh, not worth getting getting hurt. Uh, yeah, the short was on offer, but the signal wasn't there. Uh, as simple as that. So you know, it's easy in hindsight to say, oh, we should have been short. But you look at the lower time frames, where was your signal? It wasn't a signal. Yeah, you can sit and, and mull over this and say, well, there, that was a signal. I could have had a stop up there. But are you really going to climb in here? Because you don't have this view here. All you've got is the view to the left, which is uh, bottom of range. So you've broken through the range. So, okay, cool. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to have my stop up here. 256 points. This price starts moving 120 points from your entry. Uh, you're really going to start thinking, okay, I think I've got this wrong and uh, this thing's probably going to uh, to range again. Are you, uh, do you take your, your knock there or do you wait for your stop? So you're going to take the, you're going to look at it and go, well, actually, I think I'd rather just take take a knock here rather than wait for my stop because waiting for my stop is going to, going to cost me more money. And then you would see it moving and you're like, damn, I should have been in on this. And that's where your emotions are going to play and you're going to jump in down here and you say well this time i'm going to wait for my stop and your stop will be up the top here and now you're sitting at break even and you're thinking uh, uh, what should i do what should i do uh, no it's going to move it's going to go down it's, it's in a downward trend i must trust my, my my signal and it goes up and it triggers you to the upside and you have an even bigger loss so the emotions here are really key and that's exactly what's happening with everybody so don't don't assume that you're the only one that's uh, confused and trying to get in and, and try to figure out where it is because this is what the chart's telling you there's a lot of confusion um, probably a lot of people that just dumped, dumped here as well because they weren't uh, prepared to to wait they got in too early and sort of dumping their stocks as well they had their longs in already and now chaos is happening but anyway weekly gaps also closed so a bit of a ramble on psychology trading psychology so the whole thing is patience is key. Wait for the decent setups. When the decent setup comes, then you climb in with a decent position with a nice stop loss and your risk to reward is, is reasonable and uh, your probability is higher of the direction you're trading in. When you don't have, uh, when you've got breakouts and no retests, it's very difficult to, to jump in and have confirmation that you're on the right track. Anyway, that's enough of a ramble this morning. I'm not giving anybody any levels of trades this morning. It's just chaos. So uh, we'll pick this up on Monday. I um, hope it helps somebody. But, uh, you know, if you are confused, rather just keep your money in your pocket. And I will catch you later. Cheers for now.